and we'll get to the topic. All right, so you see here that I have a Google form. And what I have in here is I've gone to the first question, I've gone to the three dots and have done response validation. And I ask, what is the password? And then I want, it defaults to it being a number. So I switch it to text. And I want the text to contain the password. And then I have to make the question required. So if it's not required, they don't, then the password won't work. So it's not a matter of whether or not this is a quiz. It doesn't have to be a quiz because setting the answer does not prevent them from moving on. So you'll see, oh, I love you buddies. So I, you see I have a section. Now to create a section, you have to use this last icon on the toolbar because I'm zoomed in so much. The toolbar is at the end. There you go, so it's on the side. The last icon is add a section. So I have my Google form, I have added a section, and the section below I say, what's your name, and all of that. The first question and only question is what is the password? It has to be required, and then I'm gonna three dots, response validation, so that I can do text contain. So look, if I add a question, so what is the password? I'm going to go to the three dots. Response validation. It defaults to number. I have to switch it to text. Text contains, and then I put in the password. It has to be required. Here we go. Now, this has quiz features turned on. You don't have to have quiz features turned on, but anything that's not a quiz question, make sure it's zero points. Otherwise, it'll mark it wrong. So um, I'm going to delete that because I don't want it. But the, what I do is every I, at the beginning of class, I give them the password. And then I change the password. And there's no save button. So literally, all I'm doing is where it says text contains, I just keep changing that all day long. I keep changing it. So then I can control who's accessing it and who's not. So, so I have... When you when do you change the password once like first period took it? Well, no, that I give everyone the password and I give them, you know, three, four minutes to actually get into the darn thing. And then mm -hmm. I change the password. So then I know who either needs some help or is good around. And then, you know, especially if you're remote, I want them to take it now. And I love it because I can see all the responses coming in in real time. It's great. But um Yes, they have to, I just keep changing the password. I just keep changing the password. So once I give someone the password, so I have a student text me, they're at home, uh, they need to take the test. I'm like, okay, cool. And I change the password and I go, you need to do it quick because I'm going to change it. And I like, I pause for a second and then I change the password. I just, it just has to be there long enough for them to move from the first question to the next question. And so then what I've done is I just create a bunch of sections, I add section. I like to have a section for the demographics, like what is your name, what class are you in? And then I have a section where I, this one I, <laughs> I just said, check a box, all the things that are the rules so I know that you got it. And then I have sections with the questions. So this says section one, but it's really section four. So I just create a bunch of sections in my Google form. And then what I did is I, the first thing I do is I click this add section like a ton of times. I actually have 38 sections. You see this, it says section four of 38. So then I ask them, what do you want a question on? And it branches to a different section depending on what they want questions on. And then of course, on the three dots, I have it go to section based on answer and it shuffles the option orders. So if you take it and the student next to you takes it, your orders would be different. So if your strategies always do the first one, well, that changes each time. So then everybody is taking a different version. That's cool. 
I like that. So I had a good time making it. I now the the thing about this is is because they choose which section is that a bunch of the questions they'll never get. So when they choose, hey, do you want transformation similar triangles or congruent triangles? Um, they if they choose transformations, they will see none of the similar triangles questions. They'll see none of the congruent triangles questions. And I of course have designed it that after they do the transformations, it asks them for similar triangles or congruent triangles. Like I get them there. They actually do it with different questions. So I just keep making more sections, but I'm always moving down and never um, linking back up so that I have a lot of different versions. And I just do it by creating a bunch of sections. But then, okay, right, I have, the it's, I have 93 points possible. They literally won't see two-thirds of those points. So what I just say is you need so many points to pass rather than a percentage. So what I did is I took it or I answered it and I got them all right and see like, okay, if I got it all right, how many points would I get? I also have in here where they can choose if they want a one point question, a two point question or a three point question. Now, the only reason I included submit test stop here this should be worth zero. You want, you want all your navigation ones to be worth zero. Um, the only reason that I put that is just because it is digital, and if something happens that they have to stop it or call to the office or whatever, um, I have a way for them to submit. But uh, but they're really supposed to keep going until it makes What if them they don't finish it? Can they go back to it tomorrow? No. And yes, I have coded up, um, if I go into the script editor, you'll see I actually coded it, I think. There's a copy, so I might not have it. Nope, okay. But uh, the other one I did, I added a code that grabs the links to edit it. So if I have a student that needs to go back and revisit it, I can give them the link to their test that they can go in and finish it. Oh, and will it save where they left off? No, and yes, it saves all their answers, but it will start them back at the beginning. So that's kind of problematic in this particular scenario where it's all branching. Um, but I envisioned, <laughs> excuse what? me. I envision that I would give them that link back because I want them to go over their answers and try through it after I've done some reteaching. Mm -hmm. I I do have the link. I could, in theory, give them the link back to edit it, but the only way that works is with code. So let's just say no. I am planning on submitting my code to Google and making it a permanent add-on because everyone wants this. It's kind of weird that it's not, it was, it took me like 10 lines of code. It was like nothing. It was so easy to do. And I'm like, everyone wants this. How is this not built into Google forms? So give me a couple of months to get Google to approve it. And then everyone, everyone wants what? Um, the ability to get, you know, what if someone fills out a form and needs to go back and finish it? Who doesn't want that? Yeah. You know, a contingency. So, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop this recording. Can I ask you a quick question about Google? Something about Google 